Hey, everybody. Hi. Welcome. Jill and Levi Hunsaker here coming live to you from Utah in the United States. And we just have three time blocking tips to talk to you about tonight. And, you know, let's, what is it? What is time blocking? You basically take and decide, I'm going to do a certain task, like I'm going to write some ads. I'm going to set out and schedule out my next, you know, week of Facebook posts. And I'm going to give myself 30 minutes or an hour to do that. Or I'm going to focus on brainstorming new ideas for posts that I could do and, and basically build a list of that. And I'm going to give myself 15, 20 minutes or something to do that. And when you can do that, you can actually have focused time, effort, and energy for that one activity only during that time. So time blocking can be an amazing, amazing strategy for making sure that you're very efficient in your business. So how about if you have tried time blocking and you tend to be kind of a scatterbrain and <laughs> it hasn't really worked for you? <laughs> so one of the biggest things is everybody thinks, well, I wanted freedom in my business. And really, when you think about it, discipline is the beginning of freedom. I'm going to say that again. Discipline is the beginning of freedom. We're, we're a little bit flustered tonight. We had some, we had some interesting things going on. <laughs> I, I probably look as tired as I feel because see, it was supposed to be date night. Oh, it was date night. And we ended up going to look at a property in the mountains, but we ended up on a one way winding road along an edge. I dirt, got a little stuck. Dirt road. Not even really dirt road. It was very rocky and bumpy. It was fun. I was having a good time. Right. It, was, it was fun until we couldn't get out and the road was washed out and we had to back up around the winding road and then it was fine that was fine <laughs> we did what we needed to do and then we came home to a clogged toilet and a mess from children and now i'm whew, i'm worn out it's all good so anyway, there, there's a little <laughs> insight to where we're at in our headspace tonight. So good times there. Um, you know, as you, as you start to look at time blocking, um, think about the areas where you feel like you are already highly disciplined. So instead of getting down on yourself about the areas where you're not being disciplined, really reflect on what you're doing. Yeah, celebrate your wins because sometimes knowing that you've got a couple of wins under your belt will give you that motivation to try something new to maybe improve. Yeah, and then and then you'll be looking at it and seeing other areas where you can improve and think what might you change. And and really when it comes to time blocking, you think why am I struggling so much with this? And one of the big things is people try to plan out every second of every day. And we're going to give you three tips on how you can make sure that time blocking can work for you in your business. So the first one is to be very aware and on purpose with your intentions. So, yes. yeah, I mean, think about it. What is your intention? What's the reason that you decided that you wanted to grow this business? And ask yourself that question again. And then ask yourself why again, and really get down to the deep emotional part of that. Because when you're clear with your intentions and you understand your why, you can use that as fuel for your fire. Yeah, another thing is <clears throat> to take baby steps and just change one thing at a time because when we're trying to make a change and we try to change everything at once it's not going to stick because we don't get into good habits and we don't uh kind of get into that new mindset of a new habit yeah um in the book atomic habits by james clear he actually talks about inserting new habits into your old patterns 
So that's one of the best ways to make sure something sticks. You don't do that by changing up your entire routine and then hoping that you can just power your way through it. Instead, start inserting little baby steps into your existing routine and give yourself rewards and triggers that you're already familiar with and used to and let that happen. Um, one of the big things that we like to talk about with this is if you've ever seen the movie, What About Bob with, with Bill Murray, <laughs> um, he goes and sees his therapist and he basically says, baby steps. And then through the whole movie, that's, that's the underlying current of everything that he does in taking action. Baby steps, baby steps, baby steps, baby steps, right? <laughs> that should be the same thing in business, in life. As, as you're trying to make positive improvements, baby steps. Because if you try to take a giant leap of faith, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But I can guarantee you, if you take baby steps consistently in the right direction, that will work. So. Yeah, slow and steady wins the race, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, really, what baby steps can you start to improve? implement in terms of time blocking. So it might be, you know what, giving focused effort on making phone calls or focused effort on reaching out to, to people on Facebook and following up with, with uh, people that you have maybe neglected to follow up with. The fortune is in the follow up. And when it comes right down to it, you can never follow up enough. So just make sure that you're, you're getting those tasks in. And you know what, if you're in a bad schedule, you might even consider your first baby step is changing your time. That's one of the things that we're looking at right now is having me adjust time for family and other purposes because school started, Jill's homeschooling four kids right now, and that's been a big change. And so I've been focusing more on the business and she's been focusing more on now being a teacher for the first time for four <laughs> different kids in four different grades. And so that's been a, a fun challenge to take on. Yeah. Fun. That's the <laughs> word. <laughs> challenge might be the key word. There. Isn't fun fun. <laughs> so, uh, you know, just, just think about what is going to be the most impactful. And that doesn't necessarily mean um, the most impactful in business, but be intentional with your changes and what you're going to get out of it. So for us, um, changing schedule, getting to bed at a better time, getting up at a better time, that is not something specifically that is going to produce specific measurable results in, in our business. But what it is going to do is produce specific measure, measurable results in family time. And so that's the goal, and that is the purpose and the intent of that change. So that's why we're doing that first, because that for us is way more important than anything else that's going on in the business is to make sure that we have solid and quality family time. So we're making some adjustments. Yeah, part of that is about setting boundaries and kind of knowing when to cut the time off and knowing when to set the time aside. So. Yep, so it's never a perfect thing, but get those baby steps moving. All right. And the last one is taking action, taking <laughs> action, because nothing happens until you take action. Nothing works until you do. Right. So you think about it as, as an entrepreneur. Well, one of the hardest things as an entrepreneur is actually saying the word entrepreneur. <laughs> and then the next hardest thing is nobody's there to tell you what to do. Nobody's there to hold your hand. You have to do the do. Nobody else is there to do it for you. So being on purpose with your time, being intentional and actually doing the activity. So what keeps you motivated to keep going and keep taking action? Yeah, and, and this we kind of mentioned in um, the first tip. So really getting clear on your intention, your why, just keep asking yourself, what about that is important to you? And then you'll dig a little deeper. And what about that is important to you? And dig a little deeper. And what about that is important to you? Until you hit the emotions, 
once you hit the emotions, you know you found your intention. And you can tap into that, put pictures. Maybe it's your kids. Maybe it's a, a vacation. Maybe it is having success in your business. Maybe it is uh, receiving respect and validation for the progress you're making in your business. And, you know, maybe it's just having a system and knowledge that you know is working, right? Everybody has their different whys, but really do some deep soul searching, dig deep in and figure out what that is, and then put reminders of all that everywhere so that you can't look at your computer screen, you can't look at your phone, you can't look at your bathroom mirror, you can't look at your fridge without seeing reminders of your intention. I, oh, did you can keep going. <laughs> keep going. Go, go ahead. Um, one of the things I think about taking action is that it's really smart to have an accountability partner. Mm. Like I get up every morning at 530 to work out, but I probably wouldn't do that so well if I didn't know my, you know, I had a friend waiting for me. So if there's things that don't seem super fun to do, have an <laughs> accountability partner, maybe not your spouse, maybe someone else, maybe a coach, but have an accountability partner. Yeah. Accountability partner. Sometimes having an accountability partner that is not a friend or a family member, not in, especially not in your same household, because that can just lead to some discord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know what? Sometimes it, it makes sense to pay for a coach to be that accountability partner because they don't care about your feelings. They're going to give it to you raw, real, uncut, and tell you what you need to actually do to make progress in your business. So uh, hiring a coach is a great way to go. It doesn't have to be the way to go, but uh, it's, it's definitely a possibility if you don't have that person or Maybe that you have someone that could be an accountability partner, but it would really lead to issues in a relationship somewhere. So really look for what's best for you in that area. But uh, yeah, so you've got that accountability. But remember, just to kind of finish up what I was thinking about, the, the reminders of your why. Reminders of what's important to you and why you're building this business. When you can have those reminders and it's tapped into emotion, that becomes your motivation and you constantly get reminded of that motivation. When it's everywhere, when it's plastered everywhere, it's constantly in the forefront of your mind and you can't get rid of that thought. And so you're basically fueling yourself because you know what's important. So yeah, and you know, if you don't take the, the action to get where you want to go, then you're gonna just lose out on that vision or dream that you have. So re let's review the steps. Step one was be intentional. Be intentional. Be intentional. It's late. <laughs> we're we're doing another late Facebook live here. Step two was take baby steps. Baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. I would say be patient with yourself as well. <laughs> and step three, take action. Get out there and do it. And so one awesome thing, and I'm gonna have to go back and read this book again. Uh, it's the five second rule by Mel Robbins. And in this book, she actually talks about the fact I we've even talked about this on a, a previous live as well. But the five second rule, you have about five seconds before you talk yourself out of doing something. So instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, because you can keep going six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you start at five and say five four, three, two, one, and you just go do it. That's your countdown. That's your blast off. That's your launch into activity. So if you're struggling to take action and you have a thought and you're thinking, oh, it's good. Five, four, three, two, one, before you talk yourself out of it and then just go do it. So it's great tips. Um, I love that book. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to read it again because I haven't been doing that nearly enough, especially when it comes to getting up. Like I said, we're changing our schedule. <laughs> so five second rule to get my butt out of bed. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thanks for joining us. We hope you got some good tips out of this that you can take and go put into your business. And uh, 
you know, just drop the first thing that you're going to change in, in your business, in your schedule, in your time blocking. And we'd love to share ideas. So have a great night, everybody. Oh. Good night. <laughs>